Whew. Okay, now it's time for the dirigible of doom. So, Batman is still in the early stages of his career, but it seems like he's already endured so much. Not only did he have to deal with the horrible terror that was the monk, but then on his way home, he had to struggle through this disaster in Paris. Fortunately, now Batman is back in Gotham City and life can return to normal. Or at least what is considered normal for Gotham City. You see, however, Batman won't have very long to rest because this story uh, featured he's going to face off against a mad dictator uh, and this mad dictator has a dirigible of doom. Of course, I'm talking about this guy. Uh, his name is Napoleon Bonaparte. Well, actually, okay, so he's not quite Napoleon. Napoleon is dead at this point in history. Uh, his name is actually Karl Kruger. And uh, keeping in line with a long tradition of Batman having crazy supervillains, uh, this guy thinks that he is Napoleon because he looks eerily similar. You gotta admit, he kind of does. Uh, he looks similar to the legendary figure, and he has the same aspirations of military conquest, so, you know, it, it must be true. Practical reincarnation right there. So, how does this discount Napoleon plan on taking over Gotham City? Well, he is going to use his uh, dirigible of doom to fly over Gotham City and bombard it with powerful, get this, Death Rays. It all starts as an average night uh, when Bruce Wayne decides to go for a walk in the city. Then suddenly the dirigible of doom appears over the city and begins to bathe it in some kind of strange red light. Then, without warning, the city just begins to crumble. Uh, the destruction is terrible and hundreds die. Then, the dirigible announces that they have come to rule the world, and any who resist will be destroyed by the ship's powerful ray gun. Bruce is completely just devastated by this sudden unwarranted attack, and he decides to stick around and help clean up the debris and rescue civilians. Uh, he discovers, though, the, through the radio that thousands of people are dead now. So now it's time for the Batman to get involved and bring justice to this situation. Bruce enters his secret room and uh, checks his files and he discovers that his enemy is actually not Napoleon, it's Karl Kruger. And armed with this knowledge, he sets, he suits up and heads out into the city to find his prey. It's at this point uh, that we discover that Karl Kruger uh, leads the Scarlet Horde, uh, which is an army of about 2,000 men. They think of him as some kind of reincarnation of the great leader, Napoleon, and they follow him with extreme loyalty. Uh, it's kind of a cult-type situation. Uh, he also has three scientists working for him who helped him develop the technology uh, that he would be using to take over the world. So then Batman tries to attack Kruger with his uh, battering, but it actually turns out to be a trap and Batman is knocked out. Then Carl decides to just blow up his house with Batman inside of it as a way of sort of letting go of his old life and embracing his new identity as the leader of the Scarlet Horde. Fortunately, Batman is able to escape the exploding home just in the nick of time. Next, Batman... Uh, attacks one of Kruger's scientists, who immediately flees to the Scarlet Horde hideout. Uh, Batman follows in his bat plane and discovers that they are actually hiding in a giant hangar in the middle of nowhere, uh, possibly the location of the dirigible of doom. So now Batman's overhead, and uh, he dis he covers the bat plane right in this like black smoke, which is apparently going to hide it from the Scarlet Horde, but it's it's stupid because it's in the middle of the day. It's broad daylight. People are going to clearly see this suspicious cloud of black smoke hanging out in the sky. Uh, if anything, it's more suspicious than if he just stayed as a helicopter. Anyway, Batman infiltrates the massive hangar, only to find that the Scarlet Horde is planning on using their portable death ray machines on civilians. 
Uh, Batman doesn't like that, so he uses his uh, gas pellets to knock out the guard. Then he uses his gun. Sometimes he has it, sometimes he doesn't. Now he ha now uh, Batman decides he's going to use an axe to puncture a hole in the dirigible. But unfortunately, Kruger is there to stop him. He fires a bullet and it hits Batman in the shoulder. But before the Dark Knight can recover, Kruger takes a death ray and just turns it on him and just disintegrates his body. It, it disintegrates and it literally turns into just a pile of ashes. But, okay, so fortunately for us, though, Batman isn't actually dead. Uh, apparently, Batman switched places with one of the guards and was actually able to escape the compound. Then, he returned to Wayne Manor to treat his wounds. Uh, it's also in this panel where we learn that Batman's costume, it actually has armor in it. He wears a bulletproof vest to protect himself against such situations. So we'll, you know, add that to the list of gadgets that he's got. Then, having seen uh, the dirigible up close and its death rays, uh, Batman has learned the secrets of their operation and discovered the perfect method to defeat them. See, he goes into his lab and he concocts a special kind of chemical, which he then uses to treat the bat plane. He sprays it all over the bat plane. Uh, how this is going to benefit him, I don't know yet. The next day, the dirigible attacks Gotham City once again, but the Batplane is there this time to stop it. And they have this brilliant battle in the skies above the city, uh, but the Batplane is seemingly unaffected by the death rays. Then Batman dive bombs straight into the dirigible, causing it to explode and leaving Batman himself sort of helplessly parachuting to the ground. So Kruger escaped the explosion in a plane, and now he try he's trying to run down Batman. However, the Dark Knight isn't having any of that, and he uses one of his gas pellets to choke Kruger, causing his plane to crash land in the river. Later... Batman overhears reports on the radio that the Scarlet Horde had been captured and is no longer a threat. Which is good. All's good. All in a day's work for Batman, you know. So that's it. Batman wins once again over seemingly impossible odds. One man alone against the world and he wins. And that's very satisfying. You know, but I, I'm starting to feel sorry for Bruce Wayne. It seems like he just can't catch a break. And you know what? He would never catch a break. The man's been fighting crime for like 80 years without a break. But at least this particular adventure was a real winner for me, you know? The stakes were high, and the action was fantastic, and it's quite a ride to go on. But next time, uh, Batman is heading to Chinatown, where he will become enthralled in a mystery and forced to work uh, against a murder plot. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, but in the meantime, if you liked reading this comic with me and you want to read more comics with me, uh, why not like this video and subscribe to this channel? Uh, and if you really want to help out, uh, consider donating my Patreon. But until next time, nerds, stay heroic.